University of Missouri Healthcare knows you've got better places to be than in a hospital. That's where our world-class technology and highly skilled medical team come in. We get you home sooner. That's important to you and those who wait for you. Welcome to Radio Friends. This is Tuesday, November the 1st, the day after Halloween. I hope you had a, a good Halloween. We're going to talk about something that could be a little bit scary, a little bit frightening. How many times have you ever thought about an asteroid whizzing through space and possibly striking the Earth? Now, it happened many, many years ago. Is that right? It's happened many times. Many? Okay, many. But I mean, well, let me introduce you to our guests because they're experts on the subject. Angela Speck, welcome to Radio Friends. And Alan Withington. Pleasure to have you. Yes. Uh, from England. But you're, you're going to have a, you're going to do a talk tomorrow about this, right? Correct. Let's start with Angela. It's happened many times where asteroids have hit the Earth. But what about that massive asteroid that brought an end to the dinosaurs. Do you subscribe to that school of thought or not? Oh, absolutely. I think the evidence for it is huge. But that's not the only extinction that's happened with an asteroid. That's not the only extinction? And it's not the only asteroid impact we have evidence for on the Earth. Oh, no, I know. We've had many smaller asteroid impacts. But we've had other extinctions because yes. of the asteroids? Yes. What are our chances of that happening again in the future? Oh, it will inevitably happen again in the future. We just don't know the time scale. So you say without any doubt that at one point in the future, it could be uh, five years from now, it could be 100 years from now, it could be 50,000 years from now, but an asteroid is going to strike the Earth again and cause extinction on the Earth. If we haven't already caused an extinction, yes. Of ourselves before then. Okay. How can you say that with such certainty? Because there are lots of things that hurtle towards us all the time, and they are something is going to hit us. Mm -hmm. it, but the time scale is a question. I mean, not even on 50,000 years. I would say in between the time of now and when the solar system ceases to exist because the sun becomes a red giant, which is more like 5 billion years. Could there be something hitting our way right now that we're not aware of that sometime next week or a month from now, scientists say, uh-oh, we're in big trouble? If it was big enough to cause a mass extinction or even a small local extinction, then we'd probably spot it more than a week in advance. We would spot it more than a week in advance. Probably. Yeah. And what could we do about it, if anything? It would depend how much more than a week in advance we spotted it, actually. But, I mean, there, there are things you can do. So... Um, Is this I, part of your talk tomorrow night? This, yeah, we, we, we will mention this very briefly. Mostly I want to focus on the devastation because I want to, I'm going to focus this talk at kind of fourth and fifth graders. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they're going to like the devastation aspect. You but, think you're um, going to like the devastation aspect of it? I think so. If, if they're fourth and fifth graders? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Okay. They're not thinking what's going to happen though. But, well, uh, we, so we don't dwell on that bit, but you know, yeah. I think it's cool. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we've discovered that we don't agree on a lot of things here, but <laughs> I still like you both. Uh, what could we do if we knew more than a month in advance that a major impact mm -hmm. was coming to Earth? What could we do to uh, reduce the possibility of complete devastation? So what Hollywood would say is fire a big missile at it and explode it. But the problem with that is unless you do it a long, long, long way in advance, then all you're going to do is make lots and lots of smaller impactors, mm -hmm. thereby pretty much guaranteeing devastation over the entire globe. So that's actually a really bad thing to do. What you want to try to do is deflect it slightly. And if you know a few years in advance, it doesn't take a lot of force to deflect uh, the orbit enough that it would probably miss us. Mm -hmm. There was this uh, very close approach in 
well, actually, uh, not, not a close approach, uh, an impact, in fact, in 1908 in Tunguska in Siberia. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it exploded with the force of about um, 120 Hiroshima bombs. Uh, it was an air explosion about six kilometers above the ground. Um, and we don't even know if it killed anybody, actually, because it was in Siberia. Um, mm -hmm. If there was anyone there, they got killed, and there was no one else there to write about it. But if it had been just four hours later, um, it would have destroyed St. Petersburg, and it would have been, you know, one of the main main events of the 20th century. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to, and, and so that a little deviation of four hours makes all that difference. So if we can find out years in advance that something's coming, a little nudge, it just has to change the orbit enough that it will miss the Earth. Do you think it's possible if something that large is coming towards the Earth that we would know it years ahead of time, or could it if surprise us? If it's if it's big, then then we should be able to spot it because uh, you know the bigger it is, the more sunlight it will reflect, the brighter it will be in yeah. telescopes. Yeah, and this would be something that perhaps the whole world could unite on, instead of fighting each other. We try to save ourselves by uniting together to deflect this asteroid. It's happened in Hollywood movies. It's just possible it could happen in reality. Yeah. I, you're not old enough to remember the original Superman series with George Reeves, but there was an episode in season two where the asteroid was hurtling towards Earth, and Superman did just what you said. He flew up to it and deflected it mm -hmm. just enough that it became a permanent. Uh, it became a permanent moon around the Earth. See, that's a beautiful thing, and, and these days, you know, we send Bruce Willis up there and he just blows yeah. it up. But, know, it, but it had kryptonite on it, and Superman came back to Earth, and, and he lost his memory because of the kryptonite. Well, I, I'm not sure how we deal with kryptonite-bearing okay. asteroids, actually. But uh, <laughs> if people want to come and listen to your, uh, your talk, it'll be tomorrow where? It's in the physics building, which is on the east side of campus. It'll be in room 120, mm -hmm. and the observatory will be open afterwards, as it is every Wednesday. Right. So you can talk about the asteroids, and then you go up to the observatory. And find one. And you might find one. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so what time is it again? It is 7 p.m. Until? Uh, the talk will go on until about 8. Uh, there will be some demonstrations for young kids, and then the what observatory. What kind of demonstration? What, how you make impacts, what difference it makes if the uh, impacts are big, small, close. Okay. That we're sort of we're thing. still working on, still working on, on the, the details. details but... Oh, okay. And then after that, the kids can go up to the observatory Absolutely. and look through. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, hopefully it'll be a clear night. Let's yes. hope so. All right. I want to thank Angela, Angela Speck and Al, Alan Whittington, mm -hmm. like husband and wife, right? Yes. Yeah. I can tell you two were attached. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like your green hair, Angela. We're out of time for today. Thank you so much. Please come back again. That was interesting visiting with both of you. Uh, tomorrow, King's Daughters Holiday Festival is our topic. Our show directed by Travis McMillan of the Reynolds Journalism Institute, Audio Pat Akers, KBIA. Our floor director is Eric Stazak, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. To listen to this program again, or actually sign up for a vodcast or a podcast, and you can watch us every day. Uh, go to kbia.org, click on programs, and click on Paul Pepper, and there you go. You sign up for a vodcast or a podcast. Drop me an email, pepperp at missouri.edu.